Hello everyone and welcome to the chapter 9b study guide. This test is specifically about trig, so make sure that you know SOHCAHTOA, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, and I just like to have these written out so I know exactly where to put the angle and exactly where to fill everything in. So the very first section says to write each trigonometric ratio. So when it says trigonometric ratio, we're not actually solving for any angles. We're just finding the ratio. So this should be a fraction, A over B, in simplest form. And so I want you to pay attention first to the different acute angles that are listed in this picture. So we have angle A here, and then the other acute angle is angle B. So what I like to do from the beginning is kind of color code so I know before it switches that I need to switch perspectives. So we want to find the sine of A and the cosine of A. And then we want to find the tangent of B and the sine of B. Okay, so what is the sine from angle A's perspective? Remember that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. We could check up here if we needed to. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So what is opposite? 21 over 29. And then 21 over 29 is fully reduced. So I am done. 21 over 29. All right, now we want the cosine of A. Remember that cosine is a little bit harder to see because it's not the opposite over the hypotenuse. It's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. That makes that crocodile's mouth. That's kind of how I remember the C. So that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent over hypotenuse is going to be 20 over 29. That is fully reduced, so I am done. And now we switch perspectives. So come over here to the angle B, and we want to find the tangent of B. So tangent of B is going to be opposite over adjacent. So opposite angle B is going to be 20 over 21. Again, that is fully reduced, so I am done. Whereas the sine of B... Now, I know that the sine of B is going to be the same as the cosine of A, um, but let's check it anyway. Cos uh, sine of B is going to be opposite of hypotenuse, so it's going to be 20 over 29. I can use those rules from before just to verify that those are, in fact, the same. The cosine of one acute angle is always going to be the same as the sine of another acute angle. Okay, so let's do that again, but let's do that where we have a triangle, a right triangle that contains a radical. So again, I'm going to color code just like normal. Angle X, all of these are talking about X, and then angle Y, these are talking about from Y's perspective. So what is going to be the sine of Y? That is going to be my opposite over my hypotenuse piece. So that's going to be 8 root 3 over 16. We know that 8 over 16 is going to reduce. 8 divided by 16 is 1 half. So that's going to reduce to root 3 over 2. There's an understood one there, um, but we can fully simplify it to root 3 over 2. All right, so that means that, that the cosine of that yellow angle should match the sine of the other angle. So this one should also reduce to root 3 over 2. That's just a good trick to know, um, but let's check that anyway. Um, cosine of x is going to also be 8 root 3 adjacent over 16. So those do, in fact, reduce to the same thing. Now let's go back to the tangent of y. Tangent of y is going to be 8 root 3 over, th um, over 8, opposite over adjacent. Those 8 cancel out, and we are just left with simply root 3. Root 3 over 1, or just root 3. So what is the tangent of x going to be? The tangent of x is going to be re the reverse. So from x, my opposite will be 8, and then opposite over adjacent. I didn't do that for this one either. Opposite over adjacent. So my opposite over my adjacent for that one is going to be, um, let's see, opposite would be 8 over 8 root 3. Remember that we have to rationalize the denominator there, okay? And so what happens when you do that is you're going to multiply by root 3 over root 3. So times root 3 over root 3. We can have a radical in the denominator, and that ends up simplifying to 8 root 3 over 8 times square root of 9 is 3. So this ends up becoming... Um, root 3 over 24, and that is simply going to reduce to one-third, so that ends up being root 3 over 3, root 3 over 3. So that one just took a little bit longer because we had to rationalize the denominator. So real quick, um, I keep talking about how the cosine of A has to match the sine of B. We've done this twice in class, um, but whenever you have acute angles, so like if we're looking at X and Y here, um, we have x is an acute angle and y is an acute angle, x, x, x. When we find the sine, cosine, and tangent of x, that helps us with what we should expect to find for the sine of y, cosine of y, and tangent of y. 
Remember that the, let's see, I'm going to do this in a different color. The sine of one acute angle is always going to match the cosine of another acute angle. The cosine of that acute angle should match the sine of the other acute angle. And the tangent is just going to be the reverse. So let's just say that the tangent of x is equal to a over b. The tangent of y is going to be the reciprocal, so b over a. So those aren't going to be the same, but those are going to be um, inverses of each other. And that happens every single time. Okay, so it says based off of the relationships above, we know that the sine of one acute angle is equal to the cosine of the other acute angle. So I'm going to write that out. The cosine of the other acute angle. Okay, so it says, for example, the sine of 37 and the blank will result in the same value. So I'm going to draw this out just so that we have a picture. If you have a right triangle and you have one acute angle that is 37 degrees, how would we find the other angle? We'd do the complement. The complement of 37, you would do 90 minus 37. And when you do that, it's going to give you that other acute angle. You could also do 180 minus 90 minus 37, and that's going to give you a 53 degree angle. So what it's saying is who is going to match when you have, you could draw this out. You don't have to memorize this relationship. For example, the sine of 37, sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to write opposite over hypotenuse. Who's going to be the same as that same relationship? So this piece over this piece in the pink angle. Well, in the pink angle, that's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So that is going to be the cosine of the 53 degree angle. Cosine of 53 degree angle. We could have done this in letters if we wanted to. If this was um, x and if this was y, this would be saying that the sine of x is going to be the same ratio as the cosine, cosine of y. They just did it in numbers to show you that those are complementary. Those two angles are going to be complementary. So sine of x, and this was cosine of y. I'm going to write that a little bit less sloppy since I'm using this for the key. Cosine of y. So x and y are always going to be complementary to each other. And we've talked about that a few times, but you could always draw that out if you didn't know this relationship up here. All right, I'm going to pause it here, and then we will start our trig on the next section.